Search those who prophesy concerning the particular grace destined for you, searching as to what season of character of season or character of season the Spirit of Christ who was in them was making plain when he was testifying beforehand concerning the sufferings of Christ and the glories which would come after these sufferings. To whom it was revealed that not for themselves were, were they ministering these things which now have been reported to you among those who have been announced the glad tidings to you by the Holy Spirit who was sent down on a commission from heaven, which things angels have a passionate desire to stoop way down and look into like the cherubim above the mercy seat who gazed at the sprinkling, sprinkled blood and wondered at its meaning. <laughs> Wherefore, having put out of the way once for all everything that would impede the free action of your hope of your mind, be calm and collected in spirit, and set your hope perfectly, holy and unchangeably, without doubt and despondency, upon the grace that is being brought to you upon the occasion of the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not assuming an outward expression with the, which does not come from your from your inner being as a child of God, and is not representative of it, an expression patterned after that expression which you formerly had in the ignorance of your passionate desires, but after the pattern of the one who called you, the Holy One. You yourselves also become holy persons in every kind of behavior, because it has been written and is on record. You be holy individuals, because as for myself, I am holy. And in view of the fact that you call on as a father him who judges, not with a partiality based upon mere outward appearance, but with an impartiality in accordance with each individual's work, with a wholesome, serious caution, order your behavior during the time of your residence as a foreigner, a citizen of heaven, living for the time being amongst the unsaved on this earth, which is foreign territory governed by the God of this world. Knowing as you do, that not by means of perishable things, little coins of silver and gold were you set free, once for all by the payment of ransom money, out of and away from the futile manner of life handed down from the generation to generation, but with costly blood, highly honored, blood as of a lamb that is without blemish and spotless, the blood of Christ, who indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the universe was laid, but was visibly manifested at the closing years of the times for your sake, through whom, through him, are believers in God. The one who raised him out from among those who are dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope might be in God. Having purified your souls by means of your obedience to the truth, resulting in not an assumed, but in genuine faith, a genuine affection and fondness for the brethren, an affection and fondness that springs from your hearts by reason of the pleasure you take in them. From the heart of love each other with an intense reciprocal love that springs from your hearts because of your estimation of the preciousness of the brethren and which is divinely self-sacrificial in its essence. Having been begotten again not of perishable seed but of imperishable through the word of God which lives and abides. Amen. For every kind of flesh is as grass, and is its every kind of glory is as the flower of grass. The grass was caused to wither away, and the flower fell off, but the word of the Lord abides forever. And this is the word which you, with, with, this is the word which in the declaration of the good news was preached to you. Amen. That was First Peter chapter 1. Now let's move on to 2. Wherefore, having put away once for all every wickedness and every craftiness and hypocrisies and envies and all slanderings, as newborn infants do, intensely yearn for the unadulterated spiritual milk in order that by it you may be nourished and make progress in your salvation in view of the fact that you tasted that the Lord is kind, loving, and benevolent, toward whom we are constantly drawing near, himself in character a living stone. Stand Constantly drawing near. Oh, wait, we are constantly drawing near. Okay, salvation in view of the fact that you tasted that the Lord is kind, loving, and benevolent. Benevolent, toward whom we are constantly drawing near. Himself in character, a living stone. Indeed, by men repudiated after that, after they had taste tested him for the purpose of approving him, in which investigation they found him to be that which did not meet their specifications. But inside of God, a chosen now one, and highly honored and precious. 
and you yourselves also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house to be a priesthood that is holy, bringing up to God's altar spiritual sacrifices which are acceptable to God through the mediatorship of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because of this, it is contained in Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a stone, one chosen out, a cornerstone, highly honored and precious, and the one who rests his faith on him shall positively not be disappointed. For you, therefore, who are believers, is the honor and the preciousness of the living stone. But to those who are disbelievers, the stone which the builders repudiated after they had tested him for the purpose of approving him, finding him to be that which did not meet their specifications, this stone became a head cornerstone, and an obstacle stone against which one cuts, and a rock which trips one, even to those who, because they are non-persuasible, stumble against the word, to which action of stumbly they were indeed appointed. But as for you, you are a race chosen out, king, priest, a set-apart nation, a people formed for God's only, God's own possession, in order that you might proclaim abroad the excellencies of the one who out of darkness called you into participation in his marvelous light, who at one time were not a people, but now are God's people, who were not subjects of mercy, but now have become objects of mercy. Amen. Divinely loved ones loved by God, I beg of you, please, as aliens and, and those who have settled down alongside of pagan unsaved people should, be constantly holding yourselves back from the passionate cravings which are fleshly by nature, fleshly in that they come from the totally depraved nature. Cravings of such a nature like an army carrying on a military campaign. They are waging war, hurling themselves down upon your soul, holding your manner of life among the unsaved steadily, be beautiful in its goodness, in order that in the thing in which you, they defame you as the ones who do evil, namely your sonship as a child of God, because it works beautiful in their goodness, which they are constantly, carefully, and attentively watching, they may glorify God in the day of his overseeing care. Put yourselves in the attitude of submission to, thus giving yourselves to the implicit obedience of every human regulation for the sake of the Lord, whether to a king as one who is super, super eminent, or as or to governors as those sent by him to inflict punishment upon those who do evil and to and to give praise to those who do good. For so is the will of God, that by doing good you might be reducing to silence the ignorance of men who are unreflecting and unintelligent, doing all this as those who have their liberty and not as those who are holding their liberty as a cloak of wickedness, but as to those who are God's bondmen. Pay honor to all, be loving the brotherhood be fearing god be paying honor to the king household slaves put yourselves in constant in constant subjection with fear and implicit obedience to your absolute lords and masters not only to those who are good at heart and sweetly reasonable satisfied with less than their due but also to those who are against you for this subjection to those who are against you is something which is beyond the ordinary course of what might be expected and is therefore commendable Namely, when a person, because of the conscious sense of his relation to God, bears up under pain, suffering unjustly. For what sort of fame is it when you fall short of the mark and are pummeled with the fist? You endure with this patiently. But when you are in the habit of doing good and then suffer constantly for it, and this you patiently endure, this is an unusual and not to be expected action, and therefore commendable in the sight of God. For to this very thing you were called, namely to patient endurance in the case of unjust punishment, because Christ also suffered on your behalf, leaving behind for you a model to imitate, in order that by close application you might follow in his footprints, who never in a single instance committed a sin, and in whose mouth after careful scrutiny there was not found even craftiness who when his heart was being wounded with an accursed sting and when he was being made the object of harsh rebuke and biting never retaliated and who while suffering never threatened but rather kept on delivering all into the keeping of the one who judges right righteously who himself carried up to the cross our sins in his body and offered himself there as on an altar doing this 
in order that we, having died with, with respect to our sins, might live with respect to righteousness, by means of whose bleeding strife, the word strife is in, is in the singular here, a picture of the Lord's back after the scourging, one mass of raw, quivering flesh with no skin remaining, trickling with blood. You were healed by the stripes of Jesus, for you were as sheep that are going astray and are wandering about, but now have been turned back to the shepherd and a spiritual overseer of your souls. Man, thank you, Lord. That was 1 Peter chapter 2. Woo. Whoa. Let's go on to chapter 3. And like manners, manners, <laughs> We'll stop there. Lord, thank you for this day. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for your word. Jesus, thank you for your body that was broken and your blood that was shed. By faith, today, I break this bread. Did you hear that, man? Look, it says, it says, by the stripes of Jesus, we've been healed, okay? By means of who's bleeding strike. Jesus, thank you. The word stripe is in the singular here. A picture of the Lord's back after the scourging. One mass of raw, quivering flesh with no skin remaining, trickling with blood. We were healed for we were as sheep that are going astray and are wandering about, but now have been turned back to the shepherd and spiritual overseer of our souls. Man, do you know that Jesus was beaten to a pope? That you couldn't even recognize him. Look at what it says. It's, oh, wow, thank you, Father, for this day. Oh, it says, a picture of our Lord's back after the scourging. One mass of raw, quivering flesh with no skin remaining, trickling with blood. So just imagine that his whole skeleton was exposed and there was no, it was just blood. Thank you, Jesus, for your body that was broken. And your blood that was shed by faith today, I break this bread. This is digital communion. Amen. Listen to me, read, listen to me. Speak the word of God and feed your spirits and mind. Sit down and eat if you want to eat. This is life of peace for me. It's time to feast. Amen. My Father. Who art in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I thank you for giving me another day. I thank you for providing my daily bread. I thank you for supplying all my needs. I thank you for supplying all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I thank you for the gift of eternal life and that's knowing you, the one and only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Holy Spirit, teach me about Jesus. Amen. I thank you for your faithfulness, Father, for performing your word which you have spoken. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for accomplishing that which the Father sent you to do. Because you are living and powerful and sharper than any devil-led weapon. You are the sword of the Spirit, my Jesus. Amen. Thank you for your glory, Lord. To you belong the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Thank you. The Lord is my healer. By the stripes of Jesus, we've been healed. Rewind that and listen to that singular, though. By the stripes of Jesus. This, every, every, man, every bit of flesh ripped off his back was for our healing. Amen. Not just off his back, but just everything that he went through was for us. Amen. Thank you for being my hope. Christ in us is the hope of glory. Amen. The Lord is my high tower, my hiding place. The Lord is my joy. I thank you. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is King of kings. Lord of lords, chief of chiefs. To the glory of God the Father, the hour has come. Worship him, break your knees, bow down to the ground, face down. My God is greater, my God is stronger, my God is higher than any other. Whether he is the lamb who was slain, whether he is my Jesus who conquered the grave. 
The Lord is the lifter of my head. The Lord is mighty in battle. The Lord is my peace, my provider. He supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord is my protector. I thank you, Father, that no weapon...